Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Welcome to the pilot episode of my new series, Let's Read. For those who don't know, a couple months ago I asked authors to send me short extracts of their alternate history works for me to read and hopefully draw some attention to. I also promised to experiment with music and sound effects to enhance the reading. Alison Morton was kind enough to be the first person to submit an extract from her novel, Perfiditas, the second book in her Roma Nova series. In this story, Captain Karina Metella of the Praetorian Guard Special Forces fights a conspiracy that wishes to topple the government of Roma Nova, a Roman successor state ruled by women and founded 1600 years ago in our timeline, Sylvania. Before we begin, let me remind you that I am not a professional narrator. Please excuse any mispronunciations, editing errors, or any other mistakes on my part. I am a complete amateur at this, so please remember that, and thank you ahead of time for your constructive criticism. So, without further ado, here is an extract from Alison Morton's Perfiditas. Quarter days were a strange mix of Western, European, and Roman customs, solstices and equinox really, but in the West for the Christians hijacked them and made them religious and legal days. For Romans, they meant ruptures and new beginnings through the year. Traditionally, charities could petition the Senate in the morning before the later's formal meeting. Sylvia Apulia usually attended on these days, not as imperatrix, but taking her place like any other senator. She also attended the representative sessions regularly, as an observer. Apart from it making good political sense, she was genuinely interested. I wonder if this was part of the reason she was popular. My grandmother would normally have taken her place in the front row at the Senate too, on quarter day, but what was normal now? The open public forecourt of the Senate building was covered and wide steps rose towards the formal entrance. Inside the vestibule was dominated by the ancient's altar of victory, on which a statue of a winged woman stood, holding a palm and leaning down to present a laurel wreath to some victor or other. Founder Apulius had smuggled it out of Rome as the old empire was falling apart. The superstitious insisted that while it sat in the Senate, Roma Nova would never fall. I made my offering, a quick pinch of incense and muttered a prayer for success. I take help from anywhere. I sidled in, dressed in my usual black, but covered with a long white pala, drawn up over my head in a semblance of modesty. It was also a pretty good disguise. Inevitably, Hermina's drones were not far away from me, but she herself was standing right by my side, also in pala, posing as my companion. How long do we wait? she whispered. Until his petition is drawn from the ballot, which we know it will be. He'll have fixed that simple a detail. I scanned around and saw a number of familiar faces go into the main chamber. It was surreal. Everything seemed so normal despite the frisson of excitement caused by the curfew. I always said life existed on different layers like a pile of pancakes, one sitting on top of another. The top pancake was certainly not clued into the gooey mess bubbling up at the bottom of the pile. Oh, here we go, I whispered to Hermina. The Senate officer drew the paper out and announced, Martinus Apneus from Folletia begs leave to present... Gads, he's using his real name, hissed Hermina. Yeah. Using Kaiko would have been too obvious. We moved forward through the crowd and slid into committee room 3, where his petition would be heard. Around 20 senators were seated on one side. Opposite them, separated by the waist-high public barrier, we managed to stand just behind the People's Tribune. Justus and two others were already there, dressed as Senate orderlies. Justus had placed his troops strategically to catch as many of the delinquent senators as possible on covert video, and still so that the custodes could arrest them with due process. Justice thought we were being too nice. I'd given up explaining. I gave him his orders and told him just to do it. Stopping and capturing Kaiko was our main objective. Justice could do what he liked with Kaiko as far as I was concerned. All I wanted left was something to interrogate. A bored Senate officer signaled Kaiko to begin. He stood and faced the Senate Rose. He looked much the same as before, but was impeccably dressed in full toga. He drew a squat figure up to its full height, his arm thrust out. Gentlemen of the Senate, he paused and scanned his audience. And lady, he added as an afterthought, inclining his head to the single female senator, almost as a concession. Who on earth was the woman senator? I didn't recognize her. With her fancy necklace and white face, she looked like a ritual sacrificial offering. Or maybe it was just anxiety. I come here to enlist your help, Kaiko declared. I speak as head of the Pater Familius Charity. For centuries there have been unequal treatment of half the population. My group aims to rectify this. We petition you today to restore the traditional Roman way that led to a thousand years of greatness. Oh, for Jupiter's sake. Kaiko had watched too many swords and sandals epics as a kid. Shouts of well said came from the Senate Rose. 
Justice had better be picking this up. Nobody would believe us if not. Kaiko went on to describe various injustices, proposed the reintroduction of the Legis Juliae, and asked for the group's endorsement. He finished with an impassioned plea, which was straight out of a bad movie. Legis Juliae. Not merely Augustan ones, but the harsh anti-female update brought in by that Greek idiot Justinian in the East. None of them had ever applied in Roma Nova. I could hardly believe it. In the 21st century, for Pluto's sake. In a boring and bored voice, the official asked the People's Tribune if anybody wished to address the Senate group on this subject. Usually these things went through on the nod, but he was legally required to ask. He picked up the agenda to pass the vote when I raised one hand and tapped the Tribune's shoulder with the other. The clerk stared at me, not believing what he saw. The Tribune's mouth dropped open in surprise. I'd like to speak, I whispered directly in her ear. You're not serious. Yes, is there a problem? She ran her eyes up and down me, as if she was searching for signs of craziness or wondering if I was going to be a bunch of trouble. Deciding I wasn't either, she nodded at me and advised the official that the people wished to address the group. Stunned is how I describe the general reaction. The senators looked wary, some shocked, heads bent together in urgent whispers and questions. Kaiko's face was a dream. Surprise, thunderous, murderous. What's the name? hissed the tribune at me. Bucaria. That's it? It's enough. The people present Pucaria to speak on its behalf, she announced. I let the fold of my pala fall to my shoulder, revealing some of the black underneath, and stepped forward. Lady and gentlemen, I began, bowing to her. I, at least, knew the precedence rules. Martinus Apneus has made an eloquent case to you. Indeed, he has brought forward many intriguing arguments. His oratory is clear and convincing. I graciously inclined my head in his direction. He glared at me. However, before you make your decision to support his cause, I would like to make a few comments. We must, of course, be certain of our grounds for considering these arguments. We must peel away any emotion coding rational arguments for and against. Lastly, we must weigh up the consequences of our actions for future generations. The audience listened politely. They must have thought it was amateur night. Let me ask you to consider some concepts. Absolute power in the hands of one individual with no popular, historic, or democratic support economic and social breakdown with collapse of a prosperous, stable, and advanced scientific civilization, and lastly, the murder of female children. Uproar. Two men started in my direction, obviously intent on shutting me up. Hermina's drone surrounded me in seconds. Tall, muscular, and radiating attitude. They would beat anybody off. Next, I continued once the babble had eased up, allow me to introduce one or two facts. Firstly, the man addressing you, Martinus Apneus, known as Kaiko, is a convicted criminal. Secondly, he is joint partner in a conspiracy to overthrow the Imperatrix, dispose of her and her female children, and set up her son with a puppet council of regency to be drawn from your honorable ranks. I paused and panned around the twenty senators who were starting to squirm. Cries of no and murderers came from behind the public rail beside me. Thirdly, he has corrupted youth and embezzled over two hundred naive supporters. And finally, I heard my voice hardening. He and his partners in the conspiracy have blackmailed, subverted, and imprisoned members of the security forces responsible for the Imperatrixes and the state's safety. All these facts are supported by documentary, image, and witness evidence now in the hands of loyal members of security forces. My voice becomes bleak. You may therefore wish to reconsider your support of his cause. The room erupted. People jumped over the public barrier, hurling abuse at the senators, some intent on attacking them physically. Others watched, mouths open. The Senate orderly struggled to hold them back. I stood there and enjoyed the ensuing pandemonium for a few minutes before Hermina dragged me out, two drones guarding my back. I had seen Justice's troops grab Kaiko amid the flurry of fleeing senators. I laughed all the way back to Apollo's house. And that was Perfiditas by Alison Morton. If you guys enjoyed it and want to pick up a copy of the book, I included an Amazon link in the notes below. And if you are an author and want an extract of your alternate history read on Let's Read, you can email me a copy. Entries should be under 3,500 words and involve alternate history, but related genres are acceptable. That said, thanks for listening, and I hope I can do this again sometime soon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Bye.